And now on to our next presenter, Mark Perry, Lead Instruction Designer and Founder at Perryville Media. Welcome. <laughs> Mark's going to talk to us about drama and documentary. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, I might start off, I'll just get rid of this um, pressing. I am an instructional designer. I do freelance instructional design as well as media production. And I also teach at um, a couple of different colleges. One is um, a private college where I teach documentary production. And I also teach at a university teaching pre-service teachers on how to use technology. And so what I tend to... Um, what I tend to... Uh, my, I've lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, my approach is basically to put the curriculum at the centre and so sometimes it's very um, seductive, all this technology, the, the video and other things that can, that can um, make learning more enjoyable, more engaging, but sometimes you lose track of uh, why the purpose, the purpose of the, the learning. And so that will be the basis of my um, presentation today. I thought I would just start off with um, just playing you a video because I, I want to. I've got two um, sample videos to talk through, um, but I'll see how I go for time. So this is the first one. Work. Um, she definitely does show the signs, and um, we, we, we need to know what sort of bug is responsible for that. So meningitis that's not treated properly has some long-term consequence, consequences. Will that hurt her? Uh, because we are inserting a needle, um, uh, it, it may hurt just a little, but we will give, we'll definitely give her uh, paracetamol, and we also give uh, babies oral sucrose, which is known to uh, release some of the pain, saying that you give us permission to do so. Yes, okay. Can I stay with you during the procedure? Uh, you sure can. Um, in order to do the procedure, we need to position it in a way where uh, you can't hold her or you can't um, hug her during this time. And some parents may find that a bit distressing, so uh, I do advise parents to stay now. Oh, so it, it's up to you. Oh, I prefer to stay with you in the moment. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Right. Have, you, have you done this sort of procedure before? Yes, I, I have. And uh, this time around, I will have my consultant here uh, to observe the whole procedure. So. I have every confidence in his abilities that I'll be watching the entire procedure, so there is no need to worry. When you start the procedure, I want you to talk me through everything. I'm going to interrupt unless you specifically ask me to. Okay. Um, I have a several uh, pre-packed so I think I'll just sit there and the next one you can be sure Good. 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 So obviously, we're in um, certain territory. It's a very specialised uh, piece of learning for physicians. Um, Yes, so that's me. Um, so as I said, I'm an instructional designer, media producer and educational consultant. I have a background as a science teacher in high school. That was quite a while ago. Um, this is the name of my session. I'll be looking at um, how video can be used and some of the design and development considerations. Um, I'll be describing a range of creative approaches used when developing video resources for learning and linking a range of competencies and learning outcomes to instructional video resources. So I just wanted to highlight creative approaches because there are, um, undoubtedly, there are people in the audience that use video uh, for learning. So as we would know, there are a range of creative approaches that apply. We can interview someone, we might get them to demonstrate a skill, we could have the good old lecture, 
had a guided tour or something. Um, we could be modelling best practice of sorts. We could have um, more, more focus on the instructions or some sort of administration, like a, like a kind of user guide or a teacher guide type thing. We could get learner perspectives. They were mentioned earlier with uh, learn generated content that could possibly be used in assessment. Um, also documentation and evidence, which could also um, relate to assessment. And that means the great unknown, I guess. The show, the show is still evolving. There's also competencies and learning outcomes. Now, as I said, uh, when I teach my pre-service teachers, we put the competencies, learning outcomes, um, curriculum at the centre before we get too distracted by the technology. So, for those people that are in vocational education, you might be quite familiar with this document, this type of document. It's a training package. This one's for develop work priorities. Now, the training packages are really great because they're very um, detailed in terms of what, what is actually being asked of the learner. Observable behaviour is very popular. So, things like um, feedback and performance or personal knowledge and skills are assessed. Um, there's a whole range of um, performance criteria. So this is, this is a really good starting point. So as I said, if you're in the vocational sector, you, you probably know this back to front. If you're in the corporate sector, you may have a similar document that has just evolved somehow. Or maybe it's, um, it could be linked to accreditation with an industry body, possibly. Um, this is, the one at the back is from the um, Australian curriculum. I think that might be an English uh, syllabus. And the one at the front is from that medical video that you just saw. This is their internal um, learning objectives. So the, the very starting point, you can probably see it's a little bit tiny. Um, they, they, they wanted their learners, after watching the videos, they wanted their learners to understand the importance of the training session itself. The process, how to incorporate it into a normal working day. But we'll go into a little bit more detail as I go along. So if we look at competencies and learning outcomes, um, depending on your context, your training context, whether it's an organisation or a university, corporate, a community organisation, K-12 schools, um, vocational or private college or others, every the purpose of the training is generally informed by some sort of document so I find that that is the starting point. Um, so we have to look at those two things together because it's all good and well to have these creative video approaches uh, and have the syllabus in the other hand. And so here's my very cluttered slide um, where on the left I have the educational considerations Things like syllabuses, learning outcomes, what skills need to be um, what are relevant. Is it an attitudinal um, change that's required? Is it just simply raising awareness of something? So there's a whole heap of analysis that would occur prior to any sort of resource development. Um, that obviously relates to video production requirements. Now we've already looked at the creative approaches, but within each creative approach, is a whole heap of entry related to scripting, interviewing, who's going to be interviewing, what sort of editing approach, are you going to have teacher input, how much is it going to cost, are you going to use actors. There's like a zillion different possibilities. And so, just to come, if that wasn't cluttered enough, I find that the interplay between those two in dialogue, conversation, meetings, this sort of thing, generally uh, generates a whole heap of questions, and each one can be answered, but I guess it's the kind of um, more of a project management type of situation where, oh look, I've lost my C. My authentic C has dropped. Um, sometimes authenticity is the most important aspect, and so it's no use using a very talented actor because they're not the real deal. Sometimes you need the CEO. So, so in this situation, 
it was fine. We, we, the doctors were too busy. The trainees were not um, good enough actors, the trainee doctors, that is. So we kind of negotiated all of that to say, well, let's just use um, an actor. So because we're in that territory, we can script what the actors are going to be saying, where they're going to say it. Every element is controllable. And so um, the word emotional is um, very relevant. I'm sure there were a range of emotions that came up, hopefully, with the audience watching that clip. And I guess that's why I just threw it up there and didn't really explain it, because in a lot of ways, a trainee doctor has to engage with those emotions with a patient. And in fact, the learning outcome for that particular situation involved the doctor's communication approach with the patient. How does he settle that patient down? How does he deal with an emotional patient? Um, obviously, he's not expected to compromise the clinical procedure, but he has to figure out a way to, to communicate and um, follow the, the correct procedure. Now, that woman that was standing, in fact, I've got a little picture of her. I might talk about that in a minute. But um, generally, this is kind of um, a dialogue. With, I guess if a, a client, if you're developing, de developing stuff for a client, um, all these issues. So, the woman in the pink top is playing the role of the physician. So she's the assessor in that situation. So there's a kind of couple of layers of meaning. Um, so this was actually designed for two sets of learners: the trainee, who is the young man, and the assessor, which is the the woman with the pink top. And so the patient is kind of like not really, she's, she's certainly important for the, the workplace scenario, but in the training scenario, she's just there to allow the, the training physician to kind of um, act, I suppose. And so his actions are being assessed by his assessor. Um, and so, I love verbs. Uh, even though this didn't um, have a training package to inform it, it still has a whole heap of very solid um, uh, learning outcomes that are summarised in the, the medical college's um, documentation, training documentation, learning needs analysis, that's all been done before I came into the mix. Um, so we've got DOPS stands for Direct Observational of Direct observation of, um, uh, I think I've forgotten what the piece is. Procedural skills. So it's a skills based assessment program. They had a whole heap of um, other documentation, like the form that's on that person's clipboard. So that was used for me to develop the scripts. And so um, the reason why I've emphasise that I love verbs is because the verbs are where um, you can latch on and get the actors to perform certain actions and then that links to the assessment. So I find that you get a very nice correlation. Okay, this is extremely cluttered. I guess it, it does reflect the process in a lot of ways because as we know as instructional designers and the different hats, you often have to engage with different, different areas. The little people in green, they're the subject matter experts and the people that are signing everything off. Because basically, given the sensitive nature of this material, everything was looked over by um, other people. So the whole process was quite lengthy. The pre-production was very lengthy. Because we couldn't, even down to um, very specific terms that we use, different clinical processes, I should point out that's actually an edited version. That's just a two-minute version. The, the, the full version goes for about seven minutes. And it shows what happens beforehand and then the follow-up after. And it's one of 12 clips. So in the other clips, the, um, the, the physician and the trainee doctor, they go away to a, another room and discuss um, how he went in his assessment. So um, to start off, there's the negotiating and identifying the learning outcomes. Because sometimes these things get bigger than being heard. We can't cover everything. So it generally has to be identified what's the priority. Now, because 
that this use of video emphasizes, um, I guess, the emotional aspects. There's heaps of information that could have been covered that's just left to another, a mechan another mechanism, maybe like a, a form or a, um, a policy that's just re a reading, something that's a little bit more conventional. So um, then we had to identify the locations, the clinical context. Was it going to be a, a clinic, an office, a corridor? Where is this occurring? And so you can imagine with um, physicians, there are lots of different areas that they would get get to in their job role. Then we had to negotiate and identify the characters, situations, scenarios, actions, dialogue, ideas, content, procedures. So there's a lot going on just in that process that lead, leads to a, a draft script being developed that is really highly scrutinised by the subject matter experts and, and the educational designers within the medical college. Um, now the process of checking the script for accuracy, that took several months, uh, but it was required. That just comes with the territory. Um, there was also the continuity across scenarios and interviews, so that um, there, there was a, a mean from, say, clip three had to align with clip seven, that sort of thing. And then, I guess, as a one big reminder that it is a learning the, the purpose of the video is for learning, it had to map to how it was going to be implemented. So was it going to be used in a face-to-face workshop, an online course, how did it relate to the assessment, um, who was going to be viewing each clip, what are their clinical procedures. So after all that, we, we haven't even shot the video, <laughs> this is just pre-production, and we get a shooting script as the deliverable of this phase. So, this is a sample of the script where we have some characters. We have evidence of learning outcome mapping. Um, the fact that in this example, oh, the assessor says, okay, great, I'd prefer to go somewhere quiet, how about we talk in my office? There, that's just two sentences on a piece of paper, but there was an enormous amount of, of um, consideration that went into that line because sometimes it's not appropriate for them to have that type of conversation in a corridor. They need to kind of formalise it, there's paperwork involved. I mean, this is, a, this is why I chose this particular clip, um, because it's at the extreme end of all these protocols that need to be um, uh, followed. Most, most jobs that I work on are not this intensive. Um, it all had typical personable dialogue, um, key messages, a specific workplace situation and context and specific technical dialogue, um, all ending up in a little sim a drama within a workplace scenario. Okay, here's example two that completely contrasts that. These people are actual people. They live and work in Newcastle, and um, they are TAFE. Uh, they they fit into a TAFE learning um, course that's related to, oh, develop work priorities, which is the training package that I showed you earlier. How much time? One. Well, that time went fast. <laughs> I might just, um, oh, I won't show you that one. But basically, it's interviews with these two people. They talk through the, the type of equipment they use, the calendars they use, and they're kind of, these are, their, their kind of responses are linked to TAFE um, competencies, observable competencies. Um, same sort of deal, I love verbs. We look at the verbs, this is where the training package is really well set up, where it was a lot easier just to go through and highlight everything. But again, we started out this big, we had to kind of really um, get it down because it, it would have just been uh, unrealistic to just try and get everything crammed into these videos. Same sort of deal. Um, uh, questions? Thanks, Mark. Anyone got any questions? Yep, oh, one over here. Hi, Mark. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I wanted help with such a video, you would come in and make it all happen. Maybe. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yes, 
answer there, yes. I'll get another question here. What do you use your time frames from conception to delivery? Oh, that's really open. It depends. Some of these things take like a day, and it's boom, 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 out it goes. And then other times, that one took probably about almost one year. So, yeah, universities that take even longer, they kind of have this time frame so that everything has to be checked by committees and all that. But that's appropriate for that, you know. So I don't, I just work with whatever rhythm these um, people have. <laughs> Like I say, as long as you get paid by the hour, they can take as yes. long as they want. <laughs> um, thanks, Mark. Let's give Mark a round of applause. And um, Mark will be around for the rest of the day, won't you, Mark? Awesome. So if you need to grab him, you can catch him and ask him any further questions. Um, just want to check in. Is the Wi-Fi working? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Make sure it's just for work purposes. I know you're in a conference. Okay, no World of Warcraft or anything on there.